Hey, what's up, Snell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. I got my oral surgery done, so I apologize if I sound weird or anything. But thanks to Pat, I'm not the biggest fan of Bell Witch, but we have part one of their four hour new record. But, um, that is Future Shadow, Part 1, The Clandestine Gate. 83 minutes is Part 1, with Part 2 coming out soon, and being another 83 minutes. And then the final album, Part 3, being another 83 minutes, so... The only way I think that you can listen to the entire Future's Shadow release is digitally, without advertisements. That's the only way I can possibly think of, because you're talking about a record that is going to be as long as... The extended cut of Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Now already this is more interesting than Mirror Reaper. And like I like the concept of Mirror Reaper more than the actual like record. I know that sounds weird, but I just had a really different feeling towards early Bellwood. The demo, like, it was just something I really liked about it. And then, like, the first full length, and I have the second full length somewhere, but, like, I rarely play it. It's one of those, like, Bell Witch is one of those bands, I, as much as I love, like, Funeral Doom, I'm sorry, like, especially now I have the Evokin box set. I have their Gotham demo, full length, disembowelment. I don't have the demo stuff anymore, or the Dust EP, but, you know, it's one of those things. Like, I'm very picky when it comes to my funeral doom. So, when I instantly saw the their Gotham font, I was like, oh, man. And then, I don't know, it happens, but I got a nice big, there's actually a big old dinger down the middle of the record, but that's what happens when you ship shit sealed. What the fuck? I did not expect a label like Profound Lore to ship the records inside the actual fucking leaves like it like caused a lot of cosmetic damage to the actual LP cover and stuff but again it, it is what it is but like I just wanted to give you folks a first look at this I gave the downloads and stuff away on the patron but the clandestine gate so far, you know, I I dig it. And uh, it's two different colors. I did. Side uh, three and four are like plum. Where... Uh, Side one and two are like kind of teal almost like plum. I, I, no, no, no. See, I, yeah, I fucked up. My brain sucks. I'll, I'll show you in a second. But like right now, you're getting into your typical Bell Witch. Yeah. 
It sounds like Bellwitch. So. Real quick, again, I only listened to this once digitally, and honestly, I did find it more interesting than Mirror Reaper, but I was kind of bored. And especially 83 minutes, like, Sleep Dope Smoker gets you in that sonic nod. Like, you don't realize how, you know, that it's an hour-long, pretty much single riff. Now, I'm just going to drop the needle in the middle. And just, let's just see what it sounds like. All right, we got some chill, just in case it gets real loud. See, I like this stuff, but like, I'd rather just like listen to disembowelment. Like, I know that makes me sound like an elitist asshole, but like, it's just the truth. Well, like that's cool and I like the way the drums just kicked in like maybe I need more like I obviously need more time with it this is my first time playing it on a turntable but I just wanted to show you folks all the cosmetics but also fill you in with the information that this is just part one of this record which is three hearts 83 minutes so just keep that in mind because i didn't know that i mean i had nothing to do with this order but like i didn't know that this was like just part one of three and those three like that's the actual future shadow release but you have Dylan Desmond on bass, vocal, synthesizers, and lyrics. And Jesse Schriebman on percussion, vocal, synthesizer, organ, and piano. Now, the engineering by Billy Anderson already is just sticking out to me. Like, it just has that Billy Anderson loudness to the drum sound and i'm a big billy anderson fan i mean who who if you don't like billy anderson i don't know what to tell you you're listening to the wrong bands that's all i can really say but future shadow part one the clandestine gate again you know the lyrics were kind of interesting, I thought. The imager, the imagery was interesting. Uh, the cover artist is um, painting by Jorde Diaz Alma. And this was mastered by Justin Wise at Trackworks in San Francisco. But, like, okay, now... It's getting to the, like, because this isn't, like, getting me, like, all, oh, like, chill. This is kind of getting, like, all right. Like, come on. But, like, earlier today, even, like, and the proof's in the pudding. Like, uh, earlier today, I was listening to some Karma Moffat. And, like, you know, it's, like, as minimal as it gets, but, like, I don't find it boring because I get kind of caught in like just this hypnotic like sonic nod like that should have like honestly been one of those moments where I'm like whoa but honestly I kind of again although I only listened to this once that was predictable. I don't know. I sound like a picky asshole, like, just complaining. But, like, I don't know. I 
bar- the vocals are like buried in the mix, though. That's strange. They were like black metal y, too. They weren't buried in it before. But here's side one and two, which is a different color. Like, really nice cosmetics and stuff, but, like, I really thought translations, I mean, uh, Profound Lore would know better than to ship like that. Like, even Relapse doesn't ship like that. Relapse, they, they do do the, like, they cover the cover art. So, like, I'm sorry, I, I agree with, with J-Dog on this. This is how you can normally tell if, like, a record label don't, like, aren't music fans. Okay? You want to see the artwork. But, you get the LP, and here's what it is. But again, it's way safer than shipping it, like, sealed. But why, unless, like, it's a gnarly cover, are you censoring the cover? I hate that. Like, I see it. It's a fucking pet peeve of mine. Some labels do it, but Relapse is the number one that sticks out in my head. Because, like, why, why would you not want the cover art? But, like, especially, like, when you ship a record and you ship it like this, like inside of the actual record sleeve, I, I know a lot of the times you get shrink wrap. Re- I hate shrink wrap rec- shrimp, shrink wrap records. Like, they're like the bane of my existence. Because, like, sometimes I run out of, like, vinyl sleeves. And, for example, like, that Karma Moffat, both my Karma Moffat LPs right now, I still have in the shrink wrap, just because I'm all out of sleeves. And I know they're, like, a dollar, but still, it's just one of those things. It's just like, fuck. And some labels, like, as much as I love Roper Guillotine, my only complaint would be... Like, some sort of, like, like dust cover, whatever. That's my only complaint. Just because, like, stuff gets dinged up and, like, shit. And, and, again, it's no big deal. It's just a little bit of cosmetic damage. But sometimes it is a big deal. And, like, your record actually gets fucked up. Or you'll get a brand new record and there's a giant crease where the record was because there was weight put on top of it. The best way to ship and most record labels cover art showing LP on the back. But we're going to throw on real fast the um, D&D side of the record. Wait a minute. Something missing. I feel it. Oh, it's down here. Yeah. Alright. So, side three. Let's check it out. I'm colorblind as shit. <laughs> Again, I'm going to put it in a random spot. Okay, we're like, it still just sounds like Bell Witch. Like the soaring guitar solos and stuff, like the soaring guitar parts remind me of Atromantius. And just again, like, I'd rather be listening to Atromantius right now. And again, I sound like a dickhead. But 
I'm just keeping it real. Astromantia's fucking rule. I don't know why I don't have this on vinyl. Like, I don't know if I'll be able to actually make it through this again. Like, it was, like, legitimately a chore the first time. And that was just digitally, though, but the, the vocals are just very, like, I don't know why they're like, they turn. What the fuck? But we're going to try side four. Again, random spot. just skipped Eh, fuck it. I'm not, I'm sorry. That's just going to piss me off. And my face is killing me. But yeah, my Second impression is just like my first. It's a Bell Witch record. It's long. Uh, it's going to have slow parts. It's going to have heavy parts. If you're just getting into like Funeral Doom, check out like The demo, the first two records, and try Mirror Reaper. But like so far, the new album, Future Shadow, aside from the killer artwork, just seems like a lot of vinyl, a lot of money. And a lot of music. Because three double LPs with over 80 minutes of Funeral Doom. Like, that sounds awesome. But, like, again, just kind of taking little peeks at it like that. I don't know. We'll see. Again, maybe it's not as, like... Just as it like kind of feels like maybe you know giving it like a proper vinyl listen in the dark with like some candles I'll feel a little bit differently because when I first listened to it like digitally I was just kind of like just very just I was like, ah, eh, like, whatever, and then, like, I, I got, like, I, I saw something, it was, like, you got Bell Witch, uh, Future Shadow, and I, I was like, huh? Like, what, like, who got, and, like, I kind of qu questioned it, I was like, who got me this? And then I found out, I was like, oh, like, I, I didn't even, like, know they had a new album out. Like, I'm not really that into them, but, you know, I'll give it a whirl for, and I know, I know the channel will, actually, a lot of you are not gonna like this. Like, I'm just gonna be real. Like, this also, like, 
from what I read, like, follows the seasons, I think. And, like, I, I forget what this is supposed to, like, I, I think it might be, like, birth. I, I forget, uh, the exact, like, synopsis behind, like, the lyrical content. But, like, you see the word, like, that I follow, like, a million times in the lyrics, and it's kind of, I don't know. It's just one of those things that like, I just kind of giggled at first. And I know it's not funny, but I was just like, okay, why didn't they just call it that I follow? Because, <laughs> I mean, that's whoever the song's, you know, protagonist is, they're following the light, the deception of light. The fleeting breath in the returning light. Gaze backwards, but the waxing light that I follow. Scorch the flames of tomorrow's ashes by today, a lifeless shadow that echoes in forever decayed, bloomed of the light that I follow. Yeah, you know, it's... If water could stand, perhaps of stone sea, an arrow loosened that forever will soon crash at blind as blind waves climbing rain thrones, the wind shuts ten thousand gates, mirrored graves of dawn, blinded foe I hear in ravens lead upon beneath the whirless chariot of blinding light that I follow. Unhallowed, you know what? I'm I, I'm sorry. Just not real. It's just not my. Even though it's, we'll give it another listen all the way through. Proper review. I'm gonna go back to some sulfuric culture because I've been enjoying the fuck out of the new full length. Like, just, it's so goddamn good. Like, oh my goodness. 625 Thrash. So fucking sick. Suffocating feats of dehumanization is so goddamn good. And we have fucking Bolt Thrower on the cassette deck. I'm sorry, Bell Witch, but... For now, you're going to the back of the review pile, but also that's where it has to go because it just came in today, and today is actually the legit anniversary of my crash. Today's June 1st. Yeah. The day of my accident, it's just one of those weird fucking days, everything feels weird, and, you know, I got, I just, I wish my face didn't hurt so fucking bad, but I'm doing my best to not, like, just, it was, it's not as bad as it was, like, Tuesday after, af Tuesday afternoon, I, like, wanted to just oh my goodness it was just one of the most painful things I've ever felt but having that damaged broken tooth not there anymore feels amazing but the stitches are very bothersome but I almost said like oh fuck yeah <laughs> like Definitely listen to Sulfur Culture, and yeah, definitely listen to Sulfur Culture, as this is going on the turntable right now. Um, this is available on CD through Haunted Hotel Records. Sick, sick shit here. But, we're all 
all my true, like, you know, doom and gloomsters out there. There's probably something for you to like about the new Bell Witch, but like, you know, recently getting the new Ms. Moore Valen, like, this is so fucking good. Been listening to the Sybaris LP a lot, the Integrity reissues, the new Death Grave, the Altar of Gore compilation on vinyl with Damnation Lux. I fucking love that Damnation Lux LP. It's so goddamn good. Demon C, uh, both uh, Through the Realms and Join in Darkness. Been getting played a lot. Immolation, Dawn of Possession, Fears That Beast, Damnation Lust. Lords of Evil Power. So fucking good. Like, again, like, I'm putting that on. So, like, after this, this is going on. So, again, sorry, Bell Witch. But, yeah, also, Cannibal Corpse. I know, I, I think I said this recently. I've been listening to Created to Kill a lot. Which is pretty much the vile demo with Barnes on vocals. And then, fucking honestly, like, Karma Moffat, Blood Incantation, and Edgar Brose? Brose? Because he's French, I think. Oh no, it is like, uh, Krautrock. My, my bad. Ugh. I don't know why I. I knew it was, it's like right there, Krautrock. Where is it? There it is. I was going to say, I, I know what the fuck this is, but yeah, first press. Been listening to this a lot. I, I love this release, but really, really good. Virgin Records, first pressing. Killer, killer shit. Kind of stoked I got some hit up by a label about frog myths today at the label that I have a lot of respect for and um, they seem interested so yeah hopefully what I kind of laid out comes to life and we can get an official release of our ambient material out there, like, not doing such small, like, pressings. Like, there might be one tape left of the Void Leech split. I, I sent my copy to one of the patron winners, um, who asked for a cassette, so I was like, alright, well, this is the only one I have, so, it's all you. But, Thank you, Cat, for the, uh, um, why am I drawing the Bell Witch LP? I'll do my best to get into it a little bit more. Again, I, I need to sit down and listen to all 83 minutes. But, again, that's a long, that's a long time. And I, every, I just get, like, like, right now, I'm like, oh, man, I want to listen to some Morg Breath. And then, like, I lift up Morg Breath, and there's Ripa Kalu with Musta Ceremonia. And, oh, my, Cranial Torment? Fuck. This, <laughs> God damn it. And then Blasphemy, <laughs> Conqueror. Tour of Fragrium, the Stress Angel Nemesis promo, Hyperdontia, fucking Abhorrence Veil, like, oh my, fucking Torso Fuck. Yeah, gnarly shit, the Carcinoid Demo, Eye Gouger, God Flesh, fucking A. But, I will do a proper review of the new Bell Witch record. Future Shadow, Part 1, The Clandestine Blade.
Profound Lore Records. Yeah. Thanks for watching as always. You fucking roll. Yes. I can't do the thing. I don't want to show it. Nasty. Yes.